Feeling good, baby. I love this night. I've been looking forward to it all year. For 300 and some people hiking up this mountain to help get people off the transplant wait list. We're doing great things. I'm so proud of our team and the work we're doing. And tonight's making that whole mission possible. I think this event is just amazing. It supports a fantastic organization. Wait, and it really brings our community right together. Welcome to the 16th annual Aspen Summit for Life post-race live streamed show. Thanks for tuning in. We're at the bottom of Aspen Mountain. Gondola Plaza is just behind me. Of course, Silver Queen Gondola and the Summit for Life race venue start. Of course, we started with uh, just over 200 racers at 5.30 p.m. this evening and uh, had another almost 25 racers joining us virtually. I'm sat standing out on the deck here at Aspen Square Hotel right on Durant Avenue. We might have a few Rafta buses uh, driving by us uh, and a little background noise. But I just want to start uh, by first of all saying uh, congratulations to everyone that joined us. Uh, thank you to all of our partners. Thanks to all of our participants. Thank you to our CKF team, the Bluebird team, our host, Aspen Skiing Company. We pulled this off in a very wacky uh, last year and a half and so proud of uh, what everybody did to make this happen. They say it takes a village. It takes a whole community. Uh, this foundation, um, this event happens because of all of you. So thanks for showing up. And we did our very best to pivot to um, do everything that we've all been doing the last year and a half. And really proud of our team. I'm really proud of all of you for showing up. Uh, I want to recognize uh, a few people here before we jump into our other uh, thank yous and, and, of course, our celebration of life. We've got some really important awards tonight. The Michael Wells Inspirational Award, the Bounce Back Give Back Award winners, uh, and, of course, our fastest racers, our top fundraisers, our fastest uh, men, women, uh, groms, and masters. But I want to, first of all, say a thank you to our CKF board. This is a volunteer board. Uh, they do it for free. They help us uh, throughout the whole year to stay on track, to deliver our mission of promoting life-saving organ and tissue donation and touching those that have been uh, affected or, or touched by transplantation. So thank you to my father, Warren Klug, to our friend, Eric Sherman, uh, Charlie Lucarelli, uh, who was out racing tonight, of course. My dad was at the top on crutches. Um, thank you to John Gibbons, who put in, I think, a 115 tonight. Charlie Singer was racing. Uh, Virginia Frischkorn, who heads up uh, the Bluebird team and helped us pull this whole weekend off. Uh, Bob Wade. And, of course, Holly Upper and our treasurer, my favorite, uh, my wife, Missy Klug. At this time, I want to bring on uh, our new CKF executive director. She's been at the helm the last couple months, CC Cunningham. Hi there. Uh, uh, you good did to be here. <laughs> so good to uh, have you here. You did an amazing job. You've been with us now for a few months, and yes. uh, this was a, a heck of an effort pulling this off. Yeah, I'd say the last uh, two years has been sort of uh, touch and go, but we yeah. made it happen tonight, and I couldn't be happier that uh, you know we got to be there and experience the energy. I think that was the biggest part of it was just so many people dying to get outside and dying to do something fun. So I think we pulled it off. For me, it was really powerful when Scott McCracken was singing the national anthem. I, yeah. I was standing there next to him and just kind of shaking, and, and I looked around on the uh, Chica deck, mm -hmm. and uh, everybody was silent. These guys were all partying and drinking and having fun, and next time I looked around, and they all had their hearts on their chest and patriotic. singing the national, an an national anthem, being very patriotic. Yep. And then the start is always really powerful. That's uh, a lot of fun to uh, see everybody, and I had a chance to do that on the mic and then drop the mic and... Uh, go join my kids and hike up but yeah. just a gorgeous night and i know we haven't had the snowfall that we wanted this year but it was 30 plus degrees and uh, we Beautiful. got to the top had the bonfires the party and couldn't have been a better night for that now it's okay with me if it snows every single night here on out <laughs> we're ready we're ready for it but yeah we're we're so thankful um especially to not just the bluebird team our events team that uh helped us make this possible but also our sponsors um first up i wanted to thank the Hofbergers, Jeffrey and Russell Hofberger, um, you guys have been incredible mm -hmm. in helping us fund this 
um, event every single year. We have the Henry and Ruth Blaustein Rosenberg Foundation, huge contributors every year, and it couldn't be done without you guys. Um, of course, Aspen Skiing Company, they are uh, the generous hosts of this event every year. Uh, we couldn't do it without them, of course. Uh, the Aspen Square Hotel, where we currently are. Uh, Not a bad spot out here, by, <laughs> I must add. It's beautiful. It's a little chilly, but we're making it work. And uh, of course, the Aspen Times, Catula Nano Spikes, Paradise Bakery for their delicious cookies. Did you see the, uh, or did you taste, I should say, 300 cookies uh, from the Pattersons, Danny and, uh, and Mark and the Paradise Bakery team. As you were boarding the gondola to head down, I was like, oh, I think I'll take one of those. Oh my gosh. I'll be honest, I took two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't I tell definitely anybody. did. Yeah, we, we enjoyed them on our way down. But uh, Aspen Valley Hospital, of course, an annual sponsor. Duck Company, Jim Bruno, um, the t shirts, that's totally their, uh, their control, and they really. Uh, uh, at a tough time, they came in and helped us out there, so we couldn't be more thankful. Um, Ute Mountaineer, Alpine Bank, Obermeyer Wood, uh, we've got First Bank and Kid. Thank you very much. Socialite Photography, awesome photo booth there at the bottom of the mountain. Um, Aspen Snowmass Sotheby's, uh, Aspen Sojourner, and uh, Roaring Fork Insurance. We are so grateful to our sponsors. We could not do this without uh, all of your support, so we thank you. And an important note there, um, CC, is that our sponsors really uh, helped us raise uh, just about all of the funds to underwrite the cost of this event. So mm -hmm. all of the great fundraising that everybody did. And just to reiterate, it's a $50 registration fee. If you waited to the last minute, that went up to 75 yeah. And then you've got a $100 fundraising minimum. So uh, all of that goes to the cause of promoting life-saving organ tissue uh, and tissue donation. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And we definitely are, you know, thanking not just our sponsors, but the attendees, the participants who came out and really put on a good, uh, fun event for us tonight. Um, we couldn't, obviously couldn't do that without you guys. Um, and we are rewarding you for participating and for fundraising. So yes. we have these awesome giveaway prizes that we do. Um, I'm going to introduce our new, brand new program and communications coordinator, Miss Anna Morgan Pilardi. She has been my life-saving <laughs> partner the last couple months in planning this event. We couldn't do it without nice you. Job, it's Amazing. I'm so glad to be part of the team. Thanks for having me. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. So we've had some amazing prizes this year. Um, so the Roaring Fork Valley and even Colorado has been incredibly, uh, incredible, giving us some um, incredible prizes. Um, we have Catula, who's given us two sets of spikes this year to give away. We have SUP Marble giving us two half-day rentals. Roaring Fork uh, CrossFit is giving us two months. Full nice. full membership. I need it. Yeah, right? Yeah. Get that, those muscles going. It'd be great. Um, we also have Cripple Creek uh, Backcountry down in Carbondale. They've been extremely and Highlands, generous. And Highlands, of course. Yeah, yeah. and Highlands. Um, three gift cards from them. They're all coming away in the prize giveaway. So Now, Anna, yeah. were there also uh, the Broncos contributed something? And then there yes. was even a guitar, right? right? Yeah, so <laughs> if you are one of the top winners from the night, you are going to get a guitar or maybe some Broncos merch. Um, it's all coming to you. Yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> nice job. Thanks to all of our Roaring Fork Valley uh, local businesses. I know, like everyone, you've been through a lot the last year and a half. We had restaurants, we had retailers, we had uh, all kinds of different local donors, and, and as you said, also uh, donors and businesses that gave across the state. So thanks to all of them, and hope you got a chance to see some of those slides. And uh, when we pull up the slides of the winners, uh, yeah. they will also note all of our local partners. So thank yeah, you very yeah. much. Thanks again. We talked about the race uh, and some of the numbers. We had 200 people show up at 5.30 tonight at the start line. Uh, we had another about 25 that did the event yeah. virtually. Yep. Um, and a little different format. It was totally virtual last year. Uh, every year before that has been in person. And we started with yes! people uh, the first year we did it and grew to 500. This year we had about 225. And I'm really proud of that in, in light of this whole, uh, you know, uh, paradigm shift and all of us <laughs> adjusting to the new change. But instead of us talking about the powerful uh, start that we had, the national anthem, why don't we take a look at the start video? I agree. when we do the live event in the sun deck, which we didn't do this year. It was a party outside with bonfires and uh, DJ Tenza 
uh, and great. The best hot chocolate I've ever had. The marshmallows were oh addictive. Gosh, yeah. uh, I'm sure somebody else experienced that too. But one of the one of the favorite events of the night for me is when we ask all of the Chance Mount recipients to stand up. We ask the donor families to stand up. We ask the support family members to stand up. And it's pretty powerful that all of those recipients wouldn't be there uh, if it weren't for a donor family that said yes. So I know that uh, as a bronze medalist, this is always a silly cliche, but they're the real gold medalists this whole process. I'm not here today without one, uh, without a donor family and the heroic and selfless decision that they make. Uh, and the impact that one donor can have is significant, can save as many as 50 lives, excuse me, save as many as eight lives, mm -hmm. improve as many as 50 lives. Mm -hmm. So uh, incredible um, legacy that you can have, you know, even if uh, somebody's not here today and recycling themselves. Yeah, and I think that's really where, you know, the Chris Kluge Foundation comes in. You know, we talk a lot about, we educate a lot about organ donation, the importance of, you know, uh, giving that gift of life and making that selfless decision. We really focus on the younger generation because they're the people who are going out, getting their driver's licenses, thinking about these decisions and being faced with these decisions in reality. So we try to really target high school students, college-age students um, with our Toolkit for Teachers curriculum that really focuses on, you you know uh, all the facts it gives you the straight facts no um, n nothing doesn't beat around the bush addresses the myths and misconceptions but also makes it more understandable and makes it more real so I think that's really the most important thing that we try to do um, number one is education and through that registration and inspiration those are our three tenets of our mission here at CKF and um, I think it all starts uh, with education and that's what we really try to do here and tonight it's all about sort of inspiring uh, the people around us to totally. rally around this wonderful cause and rally around our foundation and, and share our mission so you make a great point it's not just um, a critical fundraiser for Chris Kluge Foundation mm -hmm. uh, and fulfilling our mission it's also a huge programming event tonight yes and that's something we saw you know a few hundred people in Gondola Plaza all the as I said, the revelers up there on the uh, Chica deck at the uh, residence of Little Nell, I think they heard the organ donation uh, call loud and clear, and, oh, and I'm really proud of that. I think a lot of people are going to go home tonight and say, you know, if something happens to me, honey, or uh, if something happens to me, brother, sister, mom, dad, this is what I want to happen. And, mm -hmm. and that, at the end of the day, is what we're all about. That's what this event is all about. Yeah, definitely. We've got a couple of heroes to recognize tonight, you our Bounce do. Back Give Back Award winners, two yes. amazing guys. Um, before I jump into that, I believe we had 85 nominations this year yes. from, is it 15 different states? 15 different states. Um, it's pretty incredible how, uh, you know, after last year and uh, really sort of how we shifted to the virtual platform with Summit for Life last year, we were able to still get that same energy, that same excitement around Bounce Back, Give Back. Um, it's our annual award, two biggest awards of the year, um, and we celebrate them tonight. So that's what we're here, we're here doing today. And that's not just about um, somebody that has survived a transition. And, and thrived afterwards, but they're also giving back to their communities, uh, making this world a better place. Exactly. You had a, ch a chance to talk to our first uh, bounce back, give back. Uh, award recipient by yes. the Chris Kluge Foundation, Jim Gleason. Yeah, Jim Gleason. What a an amazing guy and what an amazing story. So he received his heart transplant in 1994. Um, white, his wife is actually a donor mother, not mm. his donor, but he met her through his work uh, in the transplant community. Um, and so it's a really wonderful story. And, um, you know, he met his heart donor's family and raised them annually. Um, shortly after recovery, he, you know, started regularly visiting transplant candidates and recipients in five Philadelphia transplant centers. Um, he ran support groups, organized educational workshops, social events for transplant patients, um, and personally circulated a self-published heart transplant newsletter, um, awesome. which is pretty awesome. He co-founded TRIO's Philadelphia chapter in 1996. He served on the UNOS and OPTN boards of directors. Um, and uh, I sat down with him earlier this week and, uh, and just Talk to him a little bit more about his transplant journey, and uh, we'll present that to you now. We have Jim Gleason with us uh, today. Jim, it's really nice to see you, and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Your heart transplant, how did you initially discover that you needed a heart transplant? You know, what was your initial reaction, your family's reaction? I was waking up in the middle of the night anxious. No pain, no shortness of breath or anything, and eventually I just went to my family doctor, 
And he asked me if I had anything happen recently. I said, no. He's maybe you've had a cold or a flu or something. Oh, yeah, I had a, a cold, but it went away. He says, I need to send you over to the hospital, to have your heart checked out. And next thing I know, they came back and said, Mr. Gleason, your heart has been attacked by a virus. And so we need to put you on some medications. And if they work, that's fine. If they don't, we're going to have to consider a heart transplant. A heart transplant. I mean, this would be in 1992. And so there wasn't a whole lot of information about organ donation and transplant. I mean, it's not like it was a regular topic on Oprah or anything like that. And so I said, hey, I opt for the medication. I'm going to be better. Thank you. Let me get out of here. And two years later, the heart continued to fail. And as I was working in corporate America, I found myself exhausted. So I called my cardiologist and I described the symptoms to her. And she said, Mr. Gleason, you need to come over here right now. And when she did some more tests, the ejection fraction was down into the mid-teens. I said, Mr. Gleason, you've got about two years to live. Well, I had young children growing up. I had a lot of things to look forward to. And so when it came to a decision as to whether to opt for an organ transplant or not, I said, I want to live. I can still remember Heather, my transplant coordinator nurse, uh, on the phone. And she's Mr. Gleason, I think we have a heart for you. And so that afternoon, I ended up going into surgery. Mike Acker was my surgeon, and he is still 28 years later, a personal friend. I run into him all the time down there. I volunteer at the hospital, among other things. There's been great medical professionals that have made all this possible, and I can't say thank you enough to them. If somebody gave you the gift of life, right? we're coming up on Christmas, right? I mean, if somebody gave you this amazing gift, but you didn't know who it was, how frustrating that would be not to be able to say, thank you. And so since it is an anonymous process, and I figured out about 10% of patients eventually may connect with their donor families and know somebody that they can express it to. We, we find ways to say thank you with action. And so I got involved with TRIO, Transplant Recipients International Organization. And since then, I've been very active both in that chapter and then at the national level. I've been the president now for about 12 years. And it's just been amazing to be able to give back. And I can't say it enough how honored I am uh, to be selected to represent and to share the inspiration because many a doctor I, we run into, and when I share that I'm out 28 years, I get this look that says, no, that's not possible. It doesn't last that long. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, I've had two knee replacements now and just had the second hip replacement a month ago. I'm young again. <laughs> and so even as I, I'm fast approaching 80 years old, I feel like I'm 50. And so, yeah, I've bounced back as many patients do. And I just uh, hope that by sharing this here, it's an inspiration for others who are facing it as candidates or have had a transplant and wonder how many years. The average for heart transplant recipients, and I don't think it's changed since then, is nine years. Well, when you're out 28 years, you've beaten the average, that's for sure. Uh, what made you sort of veer towards organ donation and promoting that cause? In the beginning, when I didn't know who the donor was, how do you say thank you? And the only thing I could do was turn around and give the experience of a successful transplant to the community by way of saying, please, when you no longer need your organs, don't bury them in the ground. And so it was just a natural thing for me to do, to be, yeah, proud of the success of transplantation that gave me this new extension to life. It doesn't cure death. It doesn't avoid death. You're going to die someday anyway in accepting that. And so it's, what do you do with it today? And so in thanks to Roberto Cuevas, who is my organ donor over in Brooklyn, New York, he was attacked. He was celebrating his 38th birthday and he was attacked on the street, beaten about the head with a baseball bat. Brothers and sisters got to face the decision. There weren't registries in those days of being an organ donor. And they said, yes. And Roberto's heart ended up over in Philadelphia for a dying father. We thank you again so much for joining us today, and we, we are honored to have you here with us, and congratulations uh, I, again. I want to say thank you for offering the platform mm -hmm. of being able to show the world that transplantation works, and there's every reason to say yes 
to organ donation. And it was such a pleasure to chat with Jim. Um, what, a, what a great and inspiring story he has. Um, it, was, it was my treat to talk with him. So He's an amazing guy. Yeah. We've got one more amazing Chris Klug Foundation Bounce Back Give Back Award winner, Mr. Zach Brooks. Zach is a two-time kidney transplant recipient. After his first kidney transplant, he returned to Stanford University, played soccer for them. Uh, he, is, he says he's a B-list actor. I'm not exactly sure what that means. I think he's A-list in our book. <laughs> Uh, amazing guy, does so much for the transplant community. I'm going to shut up. Let's watch his video. Zach Brooks, how are you? Hey, Chris. I'm really good. Thank you. Great. Thanks a lot for joining me. I wanted to congratulate you on your 2021 Chris Klug Foundation Bounce Back Give Back Award uh, as our recipient this year. Thank you very much for accepting that and congratulations. Thank you. I mean, this is one of the coolest thrills of my life because I didn't really expect it. And it's just fun. And it's fun to, to meet you and, and help support your work and all the good people in your organization uh, do really good work. So I'm happy to be a part of this. Well, you're doing great work and that's why we're recognizing you. Can you just for uh, a minute or two kind of share your journey in your own words with uh, all of our Summit for Life participants and CKF friends? Yeah, absolutely. So 1998, I was playing uh, soccer. I played soccer in college and I was playing in a sand uh, soccer tournament, broke my toe, went to the doctor. I thought it was fine. He said, no problem. Let's just check on things. Uh, came back with a broken toe, but then suddenly my kidney function was poor. Some numbers were elevated where they shouldn't be. Fast forward four months, I was on uh, dialysis. Fast forward five months, I got my first transplant from my father, uh, Stephen. And then uh, that lasted for seven years. And then I had my second transplant, 2007. So the first transplant, 1999. Second, 2007. Uh, the, the graft just didn't work well over time. There was nothing I did really poorly. My mom was a match. So I got my second transplant in uh, 2007. And at that point, I really started competing in a lot of uh, games around the world. And then kind of really getting back to uh, my life as, a, as an athlete, which I was in college. Like I said, I'm in, I played college soccer and ran track a little bit. So that's like the short version. I'm a really fortunate person. My parents are the heroes to have donated twice. So the gift of life, you know, three times from my parents. That's awesome. Congratulations. And how are you doing now? You look healthy and uh, I know you're staying active and uh, traveling and living a great yeah. quality of life. Thank you. Well, yeah, obviously I'm fortunate because, you know, whenever, you know, have a conversation like this with any transplant person around the world, you know, I always think about the seven or eight people who are waiting at any given moment for their chance to have their second life and their best life. But, you know, the way I, I really try to thank my parents is to live my best life, which is stay really active. I wrote a book sort of in, in this uh, vein to, uh, it's called Discovering the Human Algorithm to how to live life with meaning and purpose. So to really try to capture some applied life principles and live those. So it's, you know, movement, movement a lot, learning a lot of things, always approach everything as an adventure and do some art and advocacy in the meantime. So I, I really try to uh, say thank you to the world and my parents in particular by just living well and, and being active and conscious about that. Good for you. Well, continued yeah. good health to you. Thank you. I want to ask you what's inspired you to uh, give back to the transplant community because this award doesn't just recognize somebody that's had a transplant and thrived physically and mentally as I know you have, but also you've used that second chance and third chance for you to uh, help those waiting today in the transplant community and, and help make uh, this world a better place. Why? Gosh, Chris, I mean, I, I talk about that all the time and now you've point blank me. I, it's me, it's such a, an honest instinct. I mean, if someone has helped you in some fundamental way, then it seems just so obvious to try to help 10 other people because that, that preciousness of that gift that someone gave to you without any question whatsoever, if I could just pass a tiny bit of that, you know, glowing, beautiful dust, you know, that stardust uh, along to another human, it just seems like that's the only way I could potentially pay back that beautiful gift to me. So it just seems like such a natural instinct to, to give. It's also really a lot of fun. And I learn a lot about my own self as a, as a human, um, to learn from other people, their journeys, their stories, their resilience. Um, so I, I really just get a lot of enjoyment out of it on a personal level. So if anyone can benefit from my little bit of activity in the world, I'm happy. And I really always just think in terms of one person, if what you and I are doing right now, but if it's one person, we're good. And that one person can be someone we never meet, 
but that, that's it. I just want to benefit one person at a time and, and go from there. Zach, you're doing great work. Keep it up. Thank, Thank you. you for all you do to give back to the transplant community and inspire all of us. Thank you I'm, so much, Chris. Uh, sad that uh, you're not here uh, with us tonight in, uh, in Aspen for our 16th annual Aspen Summit for Life, but we look forward to welcoming both you and, and Jim Gleason uh, back next winter. Awesome. And if I can just give a shout out for the Instagram page I have, it's World Transplant Athletes. If you have a body with a new part and you can move, you are a World Transplant Athlete. We look forward to following you. We uh, also, I look forward to continuing this conversation and uh, having a, a more in-depth conversation with both uh, you and Jim and, and the work, great work you're doing. Keep it up. Great. Thank you, Chris. Thanks a lot, Zach. Our uh, 2021 Bounce Back Give Back Chris Klug Foundation Award recipient, Zachary Brooks. Thanks for all you do. Thank you, Zach, for the great conversation. Thank you to you and to Jim Gleason for all you do for the transplant community, for all you do to make this world a better place. You embody uh, bouncing back and giving back. Thank you very much. Congratulations to you on your 2021 CKF Bounce Back Give Back Award. Two amazing guys. Yes, definitely. Um, both inspiring stories, and it's been a pleasure to get to know them over the course of this past year. So we're looking forward to having them as patient ambassadors, uh, hopefully accompanying us either through the virtual platform with our webinars, or if we can get back into hospital visits uh, sometime next year, we're, we're hoping they can tag along. So Normally we bring our Bounce Back Give Back Award winners uh, here for Summit for Life in person. Some of them hike it, some of them just go to the top and have fun. And uh, I regret we couldn't uh, have them here with what's going on in the world right now. But uh, I promise you, we will bring you next year. <laughs> you ready to give some more awards? I think it's time. Let's start with our top <laughs> fundraising team. All right. Well, I want to give a big congratulations to Team Kid Knees. That's Kid Dash Knees. Um, they raised a total of $3,100 for organ donation and our cause. So we couldn't be more thankful. Nice um, work, uh, Team Kidneys. Yes, That's definitely. Awesome. And we have our top three fundraisers, I believe. Let's do it. Uh, let's start in our bronze medal top fundraising <laughs> position. Ben Pulowski raised $2,000. Thank you very much, Ben. Uh, second place, Steve Wilkinson, uh, who raised $2,790. Uh, Steve and his family are from Breckenridge. We're going to hear Karen's name uh, here yet to come. But uh, Steve has done every single uh, summit for life. His son Morgan had a kidney transplant. Morgan and his brother Robert and Karen and Steve have done every uh, summit for life. They did it virtually this year. Love those guys. Not only did Steve uh, raise $2,790, but he also uh, talked to Anna Kidd at First Bank, and they gave us another 2500 bucks. So uh, Steve is really responsible for raising uh, over $5,000 and uh, been a supporter from the beginning. We love you, Steve and, and Karen and the Wilkinson family. Thank you very much. Our top fundraiser for 2021, uh, raising $3,000. She turned 17 yesterday. She's done uh, the last seven. This is her eighth uh, Summit for Life this year. Lily Justice. Not only was Lily there, but she had uh, three other friends there and her mom, Whitney. Congratulations, Lily. We love you. Thanks for uh, all that you do for CKF and organ donation awareness. You want to do the top three female finishers? And yes. I think we have a video also of our top female racer tonight. That's right. So we're starting off in third place. We have Carrie Piper. With an hour of, uh, sorry, with a time of one hour three minutes. Very impressive, Carrie. Um, second place, we have Jennifer Mendez with a time of one hour, one minute. So congratulations to you both. And in first place for our in-person race uh, for Summit for Life, Kristen Lane with a time under an hour of 56 minutes, uh, 56 minutes and 11 seconds. That's awesome. I, I'm not surprised by Kristen Lane. She's kicked my butt up uh, every time I've been up Ajax the last week. So wow. I, I believe she's our repeat winner. She won the virtual event last year mm -hmm. and uh, also won the, uh, the Power of Four a few years ago. So uh, congrats, Kristen. She's got uh, little ones and is a teacher here locally and does it all. So congratulations. Thanks for uh, being a part of it once again. Shall we present our top three males? I think so, yeah. Let's do it. Uh, bronze medal position. With a time of one hour even, Steve Denny. Nice work, Steve. Uh, second place finisher, 
who I believe won the event, the virtual event last year, uh, with a time of oh, I said yeah, one hour. Yeah, it's He's seven hours. I can't read your uh, writing. <laughs> Steve's gonna kill me now. Steve Denny was fifty-one minutes, uh, not an hour. He was fifty-one minutes, much faster. That's important. Uh, in third place. <laughs> now we move on to second place. Our silver medalist for the twenty twenty-one Summit for Life, Sean Van Horn, with a time of forty-eight point uh, fifty-four. And our 2021 fastest male race. Get me, get hungry, get it. time of 48.43. Sean Van Horn was 48.54. Andrew Reed was 48.43. Our CKF Summit for Life 2021 fastest male. Congratulations, <laughs> Andrew Reed. Yeah, yeah, and we have some also awesome um, participants who took on 70 years and older. Uh, so we have to honor our top masters in person. Uh, our top master is Bruce Gordon. Congratulations, Bruce, with the time of one hour and 22 minutes. I know for a fact that would be my time any day. So congratulations, Bruce. That is amazing. That's awesome. I'm going to steal this one because Please. it's uh, pretty special for me, the top uh, kid the top Grom, uh, female was an incredible time. And this is pretty special because uh, this in many ways was my favorite summit for life. I got to hike it with my eight-year-old and my 10-year-old River in Bali, uh, and that was extra special. We did it in about two hours. The top female, uh, Bergen Leffler, did it in an hour and 27 minutes and seven seconds. At eight years old, one twenty-seven oh seven. Bergen, you're awesome, congratulations. <laughs> Absolutely crushed it. Our top male, another incredible performance uh, with a time of 145.07. Congratulations to Aiden Haney. Nice work, Aiden. I'm so proud of you guys. You are only going to smoke all of us uh, more in the future. So congrats. That's for sure. Yes. And the top team overall, mm -hmm. so that includes both the virtual and the in-person races, I want to give a big shout out to Team Talala. Um, with an average time of one hour and 10 minutes. That's incredible, you guys. Congratulations. Um, I believe there was three members of that team who took it on in person this year. So um, congratulations again, and thank you for participating. We're uh, super stoked you guys uh, were all uh, part of the event. Um, and then moving on to top female virtually, um, as you mentioned, the Wilkinson family, mm -hmm. they play a, a key role in this uh, race. Um, congratulations to Karen Wilkinson from Breckenridge. She's Steve Wilkinson's wife. Um, first place virtual we, uh, with a time of five hours and ten minutes. Um, so remember, the virtual is uh, a compilation of uh, different sort of timings where you go out and try to uh, get the equivalent of Aspen Mountain's vertical feet. So uh, congratulations, Karen. We are happy to have you. Nice work, Karen. Thanks again to the Wilkinson family. Our top male virtual racer uh, from Arvada, Colorado. Let's hear it for Dan Bertoletti with a time of 114.11. Nice work as our top uh, male virtual racer. Definitely. definitely. Let's recognize uh, a repeat uh, racer. Yes. Uh, our top, I'm not going to call him a senior, but our top masters, one of the most experienced <laughs> racers uh, out there with a, uh, is that two hours and? Uh, yeah, two hours. I can't read your minutes. hieroglyphics. Yeah, two hours, two seven hours, minutes. Seven minutes. That's Let's hear right. it for Jim Bryan from Yay. Wisconsin. Jim and Jerry uh, have been out here and they're uh, partners have been out here the last few years. They're brothers, Jerry and Jim, and uh, congratulations to Jim. Great yes. to uh, great to have you back as a virtual competitor. Yeah. Now, should we do the uh, a very special award? I think this yes. is our final award tonight. And uh, let me wait till the uh, raft of bus clears out because <laughs> we got something really uh, important to talk about. Um, do you want to grab the the Michael Wells Award? I'm way ahead of this you. This was a, uh, a bear that was uh, donated for the very first year from I think it was Chapetta that is no longer here. It's now a different art gallery, but we see right here it's a Michael Wells Inspirational Award. Michael Wells won it the very first year. <laughs> we've had Jerry Wenner, we've had Morgan Wilkinson, who's a kidney recipient, and uh, Steve and Karen's son, uh, Christopher Lechuga, Brian Meese, Derek Janiak, Lily Justice. Uh, and Beth Pritz, mm -hmm. uh, also Henry Meese has won that, uh, and a few others. But uh, this year we have a very special recipient, uh, Lauren Ryerson. And uh, Lauren uh, passed away just recently, he was 38 years old, lifelong Aspenite, 
His whole family lives here. Mary runs Alpine Bank. Uh, Lauren and his family have been here forever. And uh, very sadly, we lost him uh, a few months ago. But uh, he made a heroic decision to be an organ donor. He was a tissue donor, donated his tissue and his corneas, mm -hmm. gave the gift of sight to uh, some others. And I know you knew uh, Lauren pretty well, as did this is a small, tight-knit community. You hear uh, all these stereotypes about Aspen, but it is a very special place. We certainly saw that at Summit for Life tonight. And it's a very special family. And uh, the Ryersons um, gave the gift of life with uh, Lauren Jr. and someone else is seeing today because of him. So congratulations to the Ryerson family. Thank you for your heroic and selfless decision. Congratulations on being our Michael Wells 2021 Summit for Life inspirational award recipient and inspirational award family. Thank you. Thank you. Let's do one more, uh, one more time. We're going to bring up our communications director and our programming director, Miss Anna, to uh, <laughs> remind us uh, a little bit about some of those giveaways and awards yeah. and how people claim those and, and how we do that. Absolutely. So I just want to start off by saying a huge thank you to everybody who took some pictures, tagged us on social media. Keep doing that. Um, we'd love to see everyone's photos from today or the virtual events. And yeah, so the giveaways, um, they're going to be announced on the 13th of December. Um, we will be emailing them out to you to let you know what you've won. Same with the awards um, throughout the week. And yeah, so just catch up with us. There's some incredible prizes, and I can't wait to see who gets them. Awesome. Yeah. And then as far as uh, tagging some of the photos and stuff, at Chris Kloop Foundation, yes. hashtag live life, give life. Live. Summit, hashtag Summit for Life 2021, nice. um, Summit Day, we're also doing that this year. Love so it. yeah, just hit us up. We're also on TikTok now. So check out some of our, <laughs> our videos from tonight. We're going to be all up there. Yeah. I can't wait to see them all. I saw a few photos and, and uh, of course, uh, some of the videos that our friend Andy Curtis shot. Yeah, and, they were uh, it's just It's just awesome. What a spectacular night. Um, I want to say thanks to both of you ladies for putting up with me the last month and, uh, <laughs> and, and helping us pull this thing off. It was even exciting. This afternoon, we had our producer sort of uh, decide he wasn't going to help us tonight. And I want to say a special thanks to our friend Joel Lee and to Andy Curtis. They stepped up and listen. Look at look at what he's working with here. These two ladies are awesome, but you got a knuckle dragger here that uh, it's uh, not easy to make this look great. But thank you, Andy. Thanks, Joel, for uh, all you did tonight to pull this program together. We did everything we could to make this a safe, fun event, and most importantly, to get the message of organ donation awareness out there. As you said. Our three tenants help register, inspire, and educate about the importance of organ donation. And mm -hmm. thanks for all you did. We also need to, again, thank our partners, Bluebird, for all they did. Yeah. Uh, and say thanks to all of our participants. Yeah. Uh, this foundation is not possible. This event's not possible without all of you. Live life, give life. Thank you. Rocking my microscopes, spikes. I love these things. I'm so stoked. My kids are climbing with me tonight. Eight and ten years old for their first... Summit for life. Did they already head up? Did I see it? Ah, uh, they just headed up, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to hook the toe straps up and they're going to climb with me. There he is, sir. Michael Wells, 22 years, hey, brother. Sir. The secret to get the kids to the top. <laughs> and dad, too. Wow. Yeah. Put the spikes down. Yes. Okay. Woo! Thanks, brother. Thanks. 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 Thanks.